in today's show. We're looking ahead to Sunday. Streaming options for points leagues, category leagues to help you win your weekly matchup. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. So we're trying to win a matchup at the end of week four, and we're looking to stream specific things in. So I'm going to cover Yahoo points leagues, ESPN points leagues, standard category leagues, what we're looking for for each category. Before I do that, a couple of news items that are important for us to note that some uh, some players who are out over the weekend or questionable, Donovan Mitchell, Jarrett Allen, both questionable in Cleveland. Cade Cunningham is going to miss the next four games. So Alec Burks might be worth looking at, even though Burks is missing today. But what, that's something to watch for next week. The big ones are in Memphis, where Desmond Bain and Ja Morant are both doubtful for Sunday. But so is Jaron Jackson. If Jaron Jackson's on your wire, you're going to add him immediately. I expect that he's returning some point next week, which, again, we've been saying for a while, we think end of November. And that would tie in with him returning maybe middle to end of next week. And... It's going to be rough. There's going to be low minutes. There's going to be sitting back-to-backs when he comes back, but you've got to grab him. Naz Reed is out for the Wolves. Bradley Beal will be out for the Wolves again. He's out again today, but he'll be out again tomorrow too. LaMelo Ball is expected to return today. Not that that matters much again for Sunday, but these are important things. Bones Highland is out on Sunday. That's important for the value of Bruce Brown. Um, so there are quite a few things that we uh, that you do need to be aware of, but we're going to get into the streaming options now for the games on Sunday, what we need to do to win that matchup, Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) All right, Yahoo Points Leagues. We'll start off there. Bruce Brown. These are all available in over 50% of leagues. Bruce Brown. With Bones out, uh, Bruce will get more minutes. I don't think there's too much to debate there. I believe he played like 36 last game. And the Shark is worth grabbing. Like, he's been pretty good most of the year. But with those extra minutes with Bones out, he'll have you know minutes on the wing to get steals. He'll have point guard responsibilities. He'll have scoring responsibilities. He's a great ad. Alexei Pokashevsky still available in over 50% of leagues. He should not be. He's a great ad because the, Sun, the Thunder have a Sunday-Monday back-to-back. So you can add him and stream him for the Sunday. And then you also get a bonus game on Monday. That's great value. Go do that. Malik Monk. Really like what Monk's doing at the moment. He's not going to be a huge upside player. But the production's been pretty solid from him. I think Lonnie Walker with LeBron out or likely out on Sunday. Walker is not the greatest category league guy, but we're talking Yahoo points here. And he probably should be on a roster. Now, for next week, it's a little bit different because the Lakers don't play again after Sunday until Friday. And that might not be worth holding on to him. But for Sunday, there's good value. Cam Thomas. I don't know whether Seth Curry will play this back-to-back. He's playing Saturday. Will he play Sunday? I don't know. But that should enable, or even Ben Simmons, who's dealing with that knee problem. Could they both sit and Thomas gets back to 30 minutes? That's possible. The big one here is going to be Tyus Jones. With Jamaran and Desmond Bain out, you're going to get big minutes or big opportunity for Tyus. This is like a campaign in um, Phoenix with Chris Paul out. You go and add Tyus Jones. Absolutely everywhere. He's an unbelievable... I don't think the Jar is going to be a long-term situation. But, you know, his ankle soreness, we know that he's had plenty of issues with lower body injuries. Just go and add tires for this one game, and you know, we will see where that leads us after that. Kyle Anderson in Minnesota with Naz Reed out. That just means they're not going to be able to play any Reed and Towns or Reed and Gobert lineup, so more minutes for Anderson at the four. And then Santi Aldama. Yes, he hasn't been great. We don't expect Jackson to play, but we also don't expect Morant and Bain to play. So that gives extra minutes to Aldama. That means guys like LaRavia have to play more at the three because Brooks is playing more at the two. And that does help Aldama's value. And there is streaming appeal for him uh, sitting here on Sunday. 
ESPN points leagues, all their roster percentage numbers are, are whack. I know that. There's a lot of inactives at ESPN. Their default is a 10-team league. But some of these numbers, all of these players on this list are rostered in under 30% of ESPN leagues. They're available in 70% of ESPN leagues, which is just actually insane. Like, it is actually crazy. Um, and Unless their numbers are either fraudulent or you know 60% of their leagues are inactive, then none of this makes sense. But I've got to have a cut off somewhere. And these are 70% available players on ESPN that you can look to stream for at least Sunday. But I'd argue that plenty of these guys are actually must-roster players that you got to hold. Number one is Isaiah Hartenstein. Tom Thibodeau, Captain Comover, came to his senses yesterday and started him over um, the Lionheart Jericho Sims. You just made the list. We'll see if that sticks. It should. Hartenstein's a great ad. Bruce Brown, Malik Monk, Pokashevsky, we talked about already. They're available in over 70% of leagues, these guys. They probably should be must-roster players. Yeah, I could make the argument that Brown maybe isn't. Monk maybe isn't. Poku, Poku probably is. Poku. Wow. Poku probably is. But they're available. Jared Vanderbilt Bar. I know he's not as good as in a points league. That, that's true. But I still think that you want to have him. And he's a great stream for Sunday for the Jazz. Um, Ty Stones. I've just spoken about that. That's the most obvious one on the board. You've got to go and get... Look, if Dylan Brooks is available, I don't think he is. But if he is, obviously, he's going to take a million shots. They're not all going to go in. In fact, the vast majority of them won't go in, but he's going to take a million of them. And then there's Lou Dort, who, again, is not a good category league player, but we're talking points leagues. So there is some value in him. No, my son is also named Bort. And yes, ESPN does penalize for missed shots, which hurts him because he misses a lot of them, but he should be streamed at least for Sunday. And then they've got, as I said, the Thunder have the Sunday-Monday back-to-back, so good value there. And then there's Lonnie Walker, who is available in over 70% of ESPN leagues. Oh, where's the sound? Hello. Hey. Um, which, again, I thought the Lakers bump would have pushed Lonnie onto more rosters. Apparently not. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Hiring can be really hard. It's a high-stakes game. You make the wrong decision and you cost yourself money, time, resources, productivity, sales, all that stuff. It's one of the most important assets that a company has. So you want to get those hires right the first time. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's so easy to go in. You go into LinkedIn Jobs, you create that job. You can be done really, really quickly. And then once you've done it, you go to your LinkedIn profile and you add the purple hashtag hiring frame. And that lets people know that you are indeed hiring. Simple tools like the screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. I would have loved this system when I was making hiring decisions back in my former life, getting the guys in without having to sit through 20 interviews because these people didn't read the correct um, requirements and they didn't mention that in their uh, resume. It's just so many weird things. And LinkedIn can help you eliminate those problems. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs. Number one, in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors, LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free terms and the old conditions apply. Let's go to category leagues. Who are we streaming in to win the points category in a category league? There's a few here. Bruce Brown. I think he's an excellent stream across the board, but he is a good one here. I put Seth Curry and I put a Q next to his name. It's a back-to-back for Brooklyn. I do not know whether Seth Curry will play in the back-to-back. I would expect he's probably on the less than 50% chance, but if he isn't, then there is stream value there for him. We need to check on Harris and Curry and Simmons. I think Joe Harris definitely plays. Simmons and Curry, I'm on the fence with. Tyus Jones, obvious, obvious. Like, obvious. Morant's out, Bain's out. Oh, sorry. There's a 10% chance of them playing. Um, Joe Harris, a good streamer for points. Obert Toppin is a pretty good stream for points as well. Of course, Captain Comover might have something to say about it. I don't want to hear any more about Obi-Wan. Rui Hachimura, that's all he does. So, then you can use him for that. And especially with Beal out, more shots will go his way. It does hurt a little bit that Porzingis is back, but he's got value. Jalen Noel is very touch and go. We have seen him play 25 minutes. We've seen him play 10 minutes. That team is an absolute disaster and things are going to change on a game-by-game basis, it feels, but Noel at least can score. His usage has been so high. And then, also in Washington, is Will Barton. We know that Barton's never met a shot he doesn't want to take, so that helps if you're streaming in for points. For threes, well, it's Harrison Curry again in Brooklyn. We've just given the reasons why they may or may not play. Um, George Niang, 
He doesn't do anything else apart from hit threes. And with Harden out and maybe Paul Reed out as well, there might be a few extra minutes that go a little bit smaller. Yang at the four, Tucker at the five. He can have those blow-up games. We've seen it literally like two games ago. Tyus Jones, yes. Matty Ryan, Matty Ice in LA with LeBron out. Maybe he plays 20 minutes. He, like Niang, does nothing else apart from threes. Shoot three, so he might he might get three of them. Um, Trey Mann, big three-point stream option. His minutes have been a little bit on the wane or a bit all over the place, as nearly every Thunder player has been. But there's a four threes upside here with him. Corey Kispert, still not getting many minutes, but Beal is out, so he will start. He'll have that opportunity. Now, he's not really grasping it. But again, if you can't hit threes, mate, you're not in the NBA. So start hitting them. And then Obi Toppin can hit some threes as well. How much does Captain Comover go with Toppin um, as his backup center versus the Lionheart Jericho Sims? I don't know. But they're up against the Thunder, a quite small team. So does Sims even need to be out there? I don't think so. I think Hartenstein and Toppin can handle a lot of those minutes. And that will be really good for Obi's value. For rebounds. Kevon Looney, back-to-back for them Sunday, Monday as well. So some stream value in Looney. Jordan Goodwin, that might seem weird to see a point guard there rebounds, but he's been rebounding really well. He's been playing better than Monty Morris, and he's been getting 20-plus minutes every game. And he might pull you in six or seven as a point guard. And he's got some other value in other categories too. John Concha, sorry. Lil John Concha. Okay! With Bain out, he'll start. Um, he can pull in seven or eight. He's actually a really good streamer right across the board, I think. Kyle Anderson, good rebound option with Naz Reed out. Denny Avdia, doesn't really do anything else, but he can get some rebounds and he should be starting, fingers crossed. Um, Aaron Wiggins, I, I don't I don't know. Like, I don't know. Baisley's out. Wiggins' last f- five games, zero minutes, nine minutes, zero minutes, five minutes, 34 minutes. If you can find a pattern in that, you're lying. You can't. I don't know what he's going to do. I think he will probably start, but how would I know? Because I, there's literally no way of knowing. But maybe you take a flyer and we go, Toppin's there, and Joe Harris can get you a sneaky amount of rebounds from the uh, small forward slash shooting guard position. For assists, it's obvious it's Tyus Jones. It's obvious. Uh, Bruce Brown, also a good assist guy with bones out. Alex Caruso and Emmanuel Quickly. They're still in limited roles, but... It's not easy to find assists, guys. It's super hard. That's why grabbing Tyus Jones, if you want assists, is absolutely paramount. Kyle Anderson can get assists. Will Barton can get assists. Jordy Goodwin. And then you're down to Kevon Looney, who is not a bad assist guy. And you get the Sunday-Monday bonus back-to-back situation for the Thunder. For the steals, Kyle Anderson, Alex Caruso, Pat Beverly, the usual suspects. Beverly and Caruso, two of the better guys out there. Anderson's also a really good steals player. Bruce Brown, an excellent steals player as well. The Bronco, Jalen Williams. Broncos country, let's ride. Two of his last three games, 30 minutes. Yes, it was a blowout win against the Raptors yesterday. But if he settles into 30, and I honestly don't think that he will, but if he does settle into 30 and they he becomes one of those players that has secure minutes like Gideon, Shea, and Dort. Dort shouldn't, but like Shea and Gideon, Dort. If Williams can settle in there, he will become a 12-team league guy. He isn't. He's not now, and I don't even think he's worth a stash. There are a lot of other guys out there that are better value. But if you are looking for some steals options and maybe assists, maybe the Bronco might be someone you ride with on Sunday. Um, a little John Concha again. What? Tyus Jones gets steals, and Jordan Goodwin also gets you some steals. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. That's cap, but you know what I mean. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it all at BetOnline.net. Do you like how trend I am saying cap? Oh, yeah. The kids love it. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline. as well. Not dot well. Oh, my God. I've lost my mind saying cap. It's really fried me. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fixed. Go have a look at some of the NFL lines for the weekend. Dallas versus Green Bay. Green Bay, four-point underdogs at home. Are they trash? Looks like it. You can check out all those odds for, is it week 10 in the NFL? I don't even know. But check them out over at Bet Online. Head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online is where the game starts. Make sure you're also gambling responsibly. Let's go to blocks. Some streamers there. Who can we add in to get some blocks up on our team? Um, Daniel Gafford, even though Porzingis is back, he still can get one to two blocks in 13 minutes. Does Porzingis play the back-to-back? I expect that he does, but I don't know that. 
Um, Patrick Williams had four blocks the other day. That's probably unlikely, but one block, yeah, no problem. Bruce Brown, good shot blocker as a guard. The uh, Lionheart, Jericho Sims. You just made the list. Kyle Anderson, DeAndre Jordan. Now, let, let's, the amount of people, I've never had someone tag me in something as much as what happened yesterday with DeAndre Jordan playing against the Celtics. Guys, I am, I am not surprised. DeAndre Jordan has been trash for four years. I have said it a million times. If you play DeAndre Jordan, you literally deserve to lose that game. I don't know what any NBA coach or NBA, any NBA GM is seeing in this guy. This has been blindingly obvious, hopefully, that horrendous clip. But the problem is, that happened in that game, and Dr. Michael Malone called a timeout and then put DeAndre Jordan back on the court. You can't be that stupid. What is, why is everyone blind to see how terrible this guy is? Great bloke, excellent bloke, shocking NBA player at this point in his career, and it has been for four years, yet continues to get minutes. It is one of the more baffling phenomena that I have seen in the NBA. In fact, NBA teams, NBA coaches, get that garbage out of here! But because he's playing, he might get a block. Wenyan Gabriel will probably get some minutes with LeBron out, so he's worth a look. And then Matisse Thibel, yeah, he's scraping the bottom of the barrel there with Thibel, but the minutes will be there because Anthony Melton's also questionable for the Sixers. So maybe Melton doesn't play and Thibel has to play more. And he could have two steals and two blocks and two points. But he could have those steals and blocks. Got fired up about DeAndre Jordan there, sorry. Um, field goal percentage. Dan Gafford, Kevon Looney. There he is, the big fella, DeAndre Jordan. Javante Green, a really good field goal percentage player. Lionheart, Jericho Sims. The Shark, Bruce Brown. Jeff Green. My name is Jeff. Derek Jones Jr. can also be a field goal percentage player. And then lastly, we look at free throws. A couple of Knicks. Emmanuel Quickly and starter Cam Reddish. I don't know why he is, but he is. Uh, Austin Reeves. Brittany Forbes. He's been playing some minutes at times. Derek Rose. Corey Kispert. Edmund Sumner. Starting point guard Ed Edmund Sumner. Imagine uh, an NBA that exists at the moment where Sumner and Reddish are starters. New York, you're doing it wrong. Troy Brown Jr. also can be a free throw percentage streamer. And that, guys, will bring me to the end of today's show. Don't forget to follow this podcast on the old Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, on Stitcher, on Spotify, and on Odyssey. And if you're on YouTube, I'd like your thumb straight up the middle. Just thumb it so hard, straight up. Hit it. Hit it hard. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Leave comments. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.